So today we're actually gonna have some fun. I'm gonna share with you guys five super cool web design hacks, one of which being this one by Paper Pillar. Check out that call to action button, how it sticks to the, to the corner there. And four more ideas, uh, just to give you some ammunition for any current or future projects that you may have so you can stand out and create amazing websites. So let's jump right into it. So hey guys, I'm Izzy from Flux, and like I said, today I've got five tips, tricks, ideas, whatever you want to call it. So let's first jump into the call to action on the Paper Pillar website that I was just showing you guys. This, the reason why I love this, because not only is it, not only does it grab attention because it, it just, the animation itself is so cool and slick, but it's also good for conversion because the call to action is always there. It's great for user convenience. Having this kind of thing happen for your call to action is just a win all around. And actually, uh, I shared this on Instagram. People were pointing out the Paper Pillar website because I had shared my version of it on my website, which is right here. I've got the exact same thing, basically. And uh, I actually hadn't heard of the Paper Pillar website. I got it from Pixel Geek, who had done a, he did a tutorial on how to pin a video the exact same way, but I just thought it'd be a cool idea to do for a, a call to action button. Well, it turns out Paper Pillar has the same thing going on, but there is changes color and shape as well. And so um, you may be wondering, so I'm sure many of you use Webflow. You may be wondering how to do this, it's actually really easy. Um, I may make a tutorial on this, but I'll just briefly tell you how because it's just, it's so easy. So you'll use whatever element is above the call to action as the trigger. So in this case, it would be the, uh, the sub headline here. So that'll be your trigger. And uh, the, the, way, the way you'll set up the interaction is when, it, when that trigger scrolls out of view, you're gonna move the button to the corner, right? If you didn't get that, just let me know in the comments. I'll make a quick tutorial. Next hack, and I'm sure that many of you, many of you have heard of this one before on our channel, uh, is Spline. And so Spline is, if you haven't heard of it, is basically 3D, easy 3D for the web. Interactive 3D, that is. So this is the, the Spline website and they're using their tool on their own um, landing page here. And as you can see, I can drag around the shapes, have fun with it and stuff. Uh, the interface is very similar to Figma. We actually have a tutorial on the channel. Um, and so if you do jump into Spline and create something, it's super easy to implement it on a, in a Webflow project because they provide you with the iframe uh, and you can then add that to your website like I did here on mine, right? I've got these shapes that you can sort of play around with and, um, and you can really get elaborate with it like this. Um, you can have looping animations and shadows and I think it just looks great and it's super accessible. Uh, I think that's the main selling point. It's just how accessible it is. So make sure to check out Spline. Uh, you'll pick it up in a day at most. Next hack is using a tool, a heat map tool like Hotjar. So basically uh, what the heat map allows you to see is where users are clicking and how far they're scrolling. So here's an example of that right here. Um, obviously the more the red areas are uh, where people click the most frequently and then you have the uh, scroll heat map here red being uh, where people spend the most time and I know that heat maps have actually been around for quite a while I think maybe even the early 2000s I'm not sure um, but what I do know is that they're super useful in terms of collecting qualitative data. So I know that most of us are collecting numbers, quantitative data. You know, you, we all know our conversion rates and stuff. Uh, but what I find heat maps useful for is qualitative data. So measuring or observing uh, user behavior, um, you know, how people are using your website. And uh, so I think that I think that we should be focused on both collect your quantitative data and know your conversion rates, but it's also good to have qualitative data and be aware of how users are behaving behaving on your website. So definitely do not forget to use uh, 
a heat map. Next one is the frosted nav bar. Everyone seems to love this one, this one myself included. Um, I think it's always worth considering if you're going for a nice premium, luxurious look. Uh, and here I've got an example of that. This, um, here, let me scroll down so you can actually see it in action. You can see it right here on the, on the lady's head. And it's just got, this is a Michael, by the way, Michael Kors micro site built by one of our, by a Flux student, one of our students, uh, who was by the name of, I think it's Boss Van Straten. I'll link his stuff in the description and I'll obviously link this website as well. But I definitely uh, recommend considering a frosted nav bar if you're going for something premium like this. Uh, I'll actually, if you're using Webflow, I'll throw the custom code in the description and on the screen right now. I'm actually, I'm using it on my website as well. Um, so that, you know, if you could always have that, um, so that you have that code on hand. All right, final hack. Um, and this one I get a lot of questions about. So let's say I'm prototyping in Figma and you know, I've got all my animations in place. How do I go about exporting that as a either a GIF or a video? So here's the thing, you can't export it as a video or a GIF on Figma or Sketch or XD. Um, what I do know is this, so I would go about it two ways. There's either, either you get your, you, you play with your prototype while screen recording using something like QuickTime, or uh, use a tool like the one I'm about to show you right now, jitter.video, which of course will be linked in the description. And this is precisely for that purpose. Um, and the interface is super easy to use. They basically call themselves the uh, Figma of animation or Figma of web animation. But anyways, uh, super easy to use. Here, I'll play this one here. This is one of their templates. And I can easily add in a new animation, um, either something that's already created or create a custom animation. Uh, and so here is the so what the way you would use this is you'd basically bring all of your assets into into jitter video which it allows you to do that as you can see up here and um, and then animate but then here's the here's the magic you can actually export it either as a 1080p video or even as a gif so I've been playing around with jitter I mean, I'm even using it for carousels actually and um, it's been an absolute blast to use. It's a brand new tool. I think it came out about a month or two ago. Uh, so definitely go check it out. Link will be in the description. Let me know if this was actually useful. Um, if it was, I'll do a part two because I've got a list of these cool little ideas, hacks, tips, whatever. Uh, so yeah, let me know and I'll make a part two. Like the video, leave a comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.